Okay, we are live on another edition of the Edlow Podcast. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I don't even know why you're listening. So, but here we are. Um, you know, these are some of my favorite ones. I've done a lot of cool podcasts with a lot of different people. Some of them are famous. Some of them are not not nationally known. But I, I love being able to talk to people who I've shared a ring with, shared a locker room with. And this is another one of those I have with me. Uh, Big MF Matt Freeman. Matt, thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for having me, brother. I've been, uh, I didn't get a chance to check the CJ one out, but uh, I will. But I, I've seen some of your other stuff, and I, I like this. I like the, what you're doing a little bit like the Joe Rogan thing, sort of, where you bring people on that are kind of interesting and just have a conversation with them. Yeah, man. And I think, you know, the whole purpose of this podcast is really, you know, one of the cool things I've shared this before on my podcast is that. I don't really fit in anybody's box. You know, I'm Mormon, but I love pro wrestling. You know, I, I'm kind of conservative, but I'm also kind of progressive in some of my views. And so I have all of these because of wrestling and because of like music and because of being, a you know, kind of playing basketball in high school and then being an attorney and then being Mormon. I have like wow, all these groups of friends. Yeah. And I got all these groups of friends that like they don't interact. Right. They're just kind of all compared. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, I know all these interesting people. Maybe if they all listen to each other, they'll realize we all have a lot more in common than we think, right? You know, um, it's funny. You, you talk about the Mormon thing. I grew up really religious, you know, in, in a Pentecostal church movement where, you know, very strict. And, um, and, 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 and I find that that structure exists, that, that the way the structure works, you know, and you have a hierarchy and, and you have a pastor and you have a people and people back and they're, they're there's problems with, with people in the in, in in the uh in the system and it's the kind of the same thing in pro wrestling and in work and everywhere else in life these things mm -hmm. they, they, they kind of um there's this there's this weird connection in all of it yeah well you know what's interesting about you and why i wanted to have you on the podcast is i i, I told you off there i go i know i've seen you around and we we've we've shared hellos but we've never really had a conversation but your reputation Kind of precedes you a little bit in that you, you, you march to the beat of your own drum, right? Um, that's true. Sometimes to my benefit, and sometimes to my detriment. But I definitely, <laughs> I definitely do things my way. I'm, I'm unorthodox and pretty much in a lot of things I've done: martial arts, you know, jujitsu, boxing, um, uh, uh, pro wrestling. I'm a little bit. I'm, I'm an unorthodox person in a lot of ways. But but I, I identify with that a little bit because I have also, because I don't necessarily fit in a box, I also tend to have a little bit yeah. of, uh, I'm a little bit argumentative with everybody. Do you see what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? I, 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 yeah, I know. Like, um, for example, you talked a little bit about, you know, uh, politics and you're conservative, but you have liberal ideas like me too. And, you know, um, I don't know what I am really on, on that level, but I definitely I definitely don't believe in gun control, you know, mm -hmm. but I at the same time, Rams, at the same time, um, I, I, I'm uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pro choice, but I'm also conservative. And where the fuck do I fit in? You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So well, and I, thing, I, and I find myself thing. arguing with people over like, you know, like when Obama was president, I wouldn't say I was a diehard Obama supporter. But I would argue with people like you were against Obama and it's really a diehard liberal, but I'm not. But then I'm arguing with people later about Trump and they think I'm a diehard Trump supporter. And I wouldn't really say that I am, but there are things that I agree with. You know, it's, it, it, I'm really I don't fit in anywhere. So, right. Yeah. I don't like the well, yeah. And that's the thing, right, is that I think really when you get a, a friend of mine I was talking to on here, actually, he said, he said, you know, I think if you really talk to anybody, uh, they all feel that way, you know, yeah. but some people are a little more outspoken than others. So where you and I might be willing to say to an, uh, to someone who doesn't like Obama, well, wait a minute, here's some good things Obama did. And well, here, OK, maybe you don't like yeah. Trump, but here's some good things he did. Some people, they're not willing to come out and say it. Well, I think that is because I realize. Is, I think maybe you too. That's why you have different ideas. You can see different different points of views. Is is you don't think you know everything, 
And like, mm -hmm. and I don't know everything. So like, I'm not going to sit here and say that everything about Trump is bad or everything about Obama is bad. Or, or if you're a diehard Obama supporter, you're wrong or, or, or vice versa because I don't know too. So I'm not like, I'm not diehard into anything. Right. Right. Well, where, so tell me, where did that come from? Tell me where you come from. Are you born and raised in your area or where did you start? Oh uh, yeah. I'm Stockton, you know, California, the rough side of town. Um, you know, it's a rough town. The, you know, the, you said I had my reputation. Well, the reputation of this city, city earned its reputation in a lot of ways. Um, you know, I mean the typical Stockton story, broken home, welfare, you know, um, tough, kicked out of school, got into a lot of fights. Um, you know, all that shit. Um, it, it, my family was uh, very religious, you know, a Pentecostal church, um, charismatic, um, you know, believed in faith and healings. Um, and at one time, the big MF was almost going to be an evangelist um, at really? one time in his life. Yeah. And, and that didn't, you know, I think, um, you know, um, I think my brain and heart kind of wanted it, but my dick had other ideas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, like, you know, and, uh, it didn't work. You know, you can't be, uh, there's certain things. Well, at least, you know, there's certain, in my opinion, if you're going to walk that road, you got to walk the road or don't walk it at all. And I was like, right. nah, uh -huh. you know, and, uh, but, you know, so, um, again, but not that I don't still have my, ideas about god or you know believe in god and all that but it was religious very religious family went to church Ch church was very important to go to church our friends had to be in church and um it's funny because i think you know you got a church service you have a beginning and you have a middle and you have an end you have a finale and in pro wrestling you have a beginning you have a middle and the end you have a finale and even like in songs you know in a song you have almost the same thing and, and one day i kind of realized that it's all the same how even at work when uh at work I, I i one day i started doing better in life because i realized that i could talk to people i could talk to crowds as i grew up having to talk in front of a congregation of people which kind of sucked you know when i was you know 11 12 13 14 15 a bunch of old um you know a bunch of old um older religious pentecostal people that knew the bible well and then i teach bible lessons and they would question me in front of everybody so I got very comfortable talking in front of people and, and mm -hmm. not being afraid. So, so that kind of saved me, you know, it, it, later on in life, even though I'm uneducated, high school dropout and all that shit. But like I was able to get up in front of a group of people and talk and get people to listen and move people. But I realized it's all the same. You get up and talk in the beginning. You're building two things. and You're setting up moments. So like music, wrestling, church, um, it's all, it all kind of relates to each other. Yeah, no, that's true. You know, you said some things in there that I find really interesting. So you mentioned you were Pentecostal, but you also mentioned your high school dropout. Tell me, tell me yeah. how that, how that <laughs> happened. Like how, how did that come well, about? You know, uh, a lot of, uh, not all, but a lot of, uh, church people have a lot of problems at the same time. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's true. Like, that's Very be. true. And, um, so, you know, uh, for one, you know, um, uh, man, um, I didn't, I have learning disabilities. I was dyslexic, you know, mm. and, um, that, you know, they put you in the, they put you in the special class, you know what I'm saying? Right. So like, so then you, I, I didn't do well there and then I would, then I'd get in fights and then I'd cut class and, you know, I'd get into trouble and, and, I, and, and maybe, I found my identity in, in being a trouble, you know, being the guy that would and, and, and get the, get the whole class going insane. You know, like, uh -huh. Oh man, bro. Like I did crazy shit, bro. I was like, uh, I had, don't give me, I don't want to make it look like I had a bad family. I did have a good family in a lot of ways. You know, my mother loved me. My dad did his best. You know, they, we, we all life is hard, man. On all of us, you know, things growing up, you realize, fuck man, it ain't easy. But, uh, I went to a, I went to a Christian school, right? A, a Baptist school it's a, it's called Northside Christian Academy. Doesn't mm -hmm. even exist anymore. But uh, my mom was really scared the world was like the world was gonna get me. But but you know, but it, so she put me, she took me out of Franklin, put me in a Christian school. I got in trouble at you know Franklin. I started going to a 
a Christian school that these people in this school, the teachers and the principals were really fucking sheltered and they had no street smarts. So I'm going to, I, I'm smarter than these teachers and I'm, and I'm and, and back then weed was a way bigger deal than what it is today. You know, like it was, mm-hmm. it wasn't as, it wasn't as socially accepted. It was a mm-hmm. bigger deal to get caught, you know, and anyways, you know, I'm bringing, you know, Mexican weed to school and breaking it off and selling it and, you know, and, and like, and, and get it bring, bringing you know I, I buying guns and selling them and, and, and i'm with all these dorks you know like i went you know christian style kids who are very very um <laughs> sheltered but like they don't know real life and so you know i'm, I'm showing up at this anyway, so, so you're school, showing up you're, sh- you're showing up and you're and you're like let me show you the world here let me show you some you know, yeah, let me show you but some like, guns. Like, but, and they thought i was the coolest guy in the world because they, they they were so sheltered, they went, you know what I'm saying, like, mm-hmm. and like somehow, like, even though I was sheltered, I wasn't at the same time. If that makes any sense, and yeah, um, so you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing that, and then I end up getting kicked out of there, mm-hmm. and and then um, just never, never went to, you know, never was much into school. Kind of did my own thing, um, you know, uh, but yeah, that's that, that's how that goes. Wow, so. Now, so you eventually you get kicked out of school, so you you drop out, and then uh, where where in this story? Well, let me back up. So you said your 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 family, your mom loved you, your dad did his best, but things were kind of broken. What do you mean by that? I mean, no, they you know, um, well, you know, my mom uh, who passed away recently. You know, God bless her. About three or four months ago, I lost my mother, and you oh, know, there's nothing. You know, yeah, man, but uh, but I I don't mind talking about things. I'm I'm pretty open for the most part. Um, I, I was the thing that tricked my old man into marrying my mom, sort of, you know, Mm. like, you know, like back then, if you got, you got a girl pregnant, you had to get married. He didn't specifically want to be married. He had other plans. They met Mm. in a church and then, uh, he kind of wanted to go and do music and be a musician. And then he had a lot and he had a, you know, he had he had some moments where he almost made it, you know, but, um, but, uh, basically he, he was trapped. He, he was tricked into getting, uh, tricked in a way, you know, got, mm-hmm. got a girl pregnant and thought it, thought it was safe to bust and it wasn't, you know, um, <laughs> and then here I am, you know, and, um, and, uh, so that, you know, there was resentment there and then just the music and then they eventually both were, you know, my mom was really talented. She's a good singer. They went from the church thing to the to the bands and, and, to, and kind of local tours. And like, um, if you remember, uh, uh, there was a movie you might not remember, but it was called the Little Apple, the Little Apple Dumpling Gang, and Don Knotts was in it. Oh yeah. Uh, well, okay. So my dad was touring with a guy, Randy Sparks, that wrote that song. Um, oh wow. Yeah, the, the the theme song for the movie, the little the little apple dumpling gang, and it, it was Randy Sparks, and they had they had this spot in Stockton they would gig at, and they was they was traveling, you know, all over, all over Northern California, and uh, you know, and he was doing that and drugs, drugs, you know, uh, drugs and all that shit, and then uh, you know, there was a moment, you know, where my where my old man did did, did some drugs that cost him a lot, you know, where he never, mm. you know, some PCP. And then uh, mm. kind of fucked him up, you know, and he paid the price for it. And then later on, not that long after that, he thought he was smoking some weed, you know, and it was laced. Mm. He got hit with that with it again, and it was a lot of it. So, man, mm. my old man just fucking disappeared, you know. He just disappeared. Nobody could find him. He smoked. Oh, wow. He thought he was smoking uh, weed, and he was smoking weed laced with, you know, Angel Dust, KJ. And he just disappeared and went on a run, and no one could find him for weeks. And then uh, he thought that... Um, no wonder why I'm so fucking crazy. He thought that if he was naked, he was invisible. <laughs> so he it was he was walking around Stockton with no clothes on, and it went into some stranger's house. The doors open, and he sat down and started watching TV. <laughs> oh man! Wow. <laughs> they, you know, then they see this guy wakes up, and there's this guy in his living room. Uh, completely naked watching TV. <laughs> like, so they put a gun to his head. And then the guy realized that he really didn't mean any harm. He was just, you know, he was out of it. So then they, you know, they called the police and then uh, they came in, you know, but they brought him, uh, you know, with the mental health and all that shit. And then, and then, you know, the weird thing about that was they forced him into taking some pretty fucking heavy drugs. 
mm. back then. And, uh, and, and that really seemed to hurt him. It's a whole other story, long story, but that really seemed to hurt him more than, mm. than, than the fucking, uh, you know, than, than, the, than the KJ. It seemed to hurt him a lot more. It fucked him up even worse. Mm. And if you really want to delve into conspiracy, at the time, um, you know, they were doing those fucking, they were doing, they, they, if you believe this shit, they were running, the, the CIA was running drugs, was running acid, was running things. They, they, they gave it to the, the, the soldiers unknowingly and, and mm. they experimented with them. They were, they were putting drugs out on the street, seeing what happened to people and, and doing some MK Ultra type shit. Yeah. And it's you know, and that Vacaville was one of the places where they did this at. That's even history, it's true. And one of you know, and 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 mental mental health has got a crazy if you look at the whole history of it, I think they do some good things today, you know. I do, but mm -hmm. I think they haven't always. And um, right. back then they were doing some weird shit. So I've I've always wondered, you know, what really happened back then. Because yeah. uh because Stockton was one of the places that was that was that was associated with vacaville mm. at that time and it's like you know uh, you know it, it's kind of weird but um that's a whole other story. So that fucked him up you know and he never he never quite got right from that and then you know you have alcohol and all the other shit and you know man uh, yeah how, how old when the when that whole incident happened how old were you um three or four. Oh wow do you remember it happening yeah and he would come in at, like you know um yeah um yeah, I do, and, but but like he was, but for the rest of his life, and, and for the rest of his life, he would snap back into it. You know, it was something mm. something could happen and trigger that, whatever the fuck that is. Wow. Um, and then he would go into that, you know, where I know when it's happening. But yeah, for sure, he, for the rest of his life, he was fucked from that. You know, wow. even wow. it okay that he would get, then he would, then he would get snapped. He go to okay, and he would get snapped, and then self medicated with alcohol, and shit like that. So. It's, wow. it's really it's it's it was a crazy ride, you know. Um, yeah. But he was a great, you know. He was a, a pretty damn good musician. He had a couple of other, almost went to Nashville, you know. Almost. You what, know, did, what did he play? He played everything, actually, everything. But 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 he specialized in the piano back then. Um, oh. But he played everything. So yeah. yeah. Did did he uh, he did he try to get you into music at all, or did you play? I love. If you see me at karaoke, I'm Elvis. I didn't have my brother is a very talented musician. It just never it never came my way. But mm. um, no. Yeah. Well, now you. When did you start uh, in your you know in your life? You you mentioned you did kickboxing, boxing, like yeah, jujitsu. I know you had a you had a jujitsu podcast that's done very well. Yeah, inside BJJ, I'm kind of doing that again. We we did like about 500 episodes. Mm. There were there were times, man. We were hot. You know, we were uh, top ten sports podcast on itunes there were times that on their you know on, on their breakdown of the top 10 we were up there with you know shell sonnen with uh you know with uh you know all kinds of people uh that were right. that were bigger names and um you know um uh we did we did really well yeah well when when did fight sports become a part of your life you know i was always fascinated with my whole life i was fascinated with pro wrestling with fighting with bruce lee chuck norris karate movies fucking um um you know pro wrestling and i think the thing with pro wrestling was uh well back then you couldn't just do nobody could do pro wrestling back they didn't have all these wrestling schools they didn't have the internet it was real a lot harder to do and i always thought you had to be really big and all that other shit so i went into to, to fighting but um um I think when I when I when I stopped kind of when I really really stopped doing the church thing for for good I wouldn't say for good but you know I still have a spiritual side to me but when I stopped you know when that stopped being my passion and when I stopped when I realized I didn't want to be in a you know like a, like an evangelist type guy um, I was watching uh, some guy I was working at Office Depot and this guy brought in a VHS mm -hmm. it was the ultimate fight it was the ultimate uh, fighter ultimate fighting oh. back then I, the first yeah. time I had seen it and I was like what the fuck is this. What the mm -hmm. fuck is this? And I said, oh, my God, I love this. <laughs> and um, I had a cousin, actually, his name, we call him Super Cuz. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and he's a very interesting guy. He's a, he's, he, he was a crip, you know, a legitimate crip, but he was white. But he was actually, you know, he ran with the blacks and all that shit. And, um, and, I, and I always, we, we were always, you know, doing shit. And I, always, I always, truth be told, I always wanted to kick his ass all my life. He kicked my ass, you know. and. 
and I always wanted to beat his ass, to be honest with you, like in the back yeah. of my head. So I was watching this shit, you know, and I love watching the UFC, like Hoist Gracie and the begin the first ones and the no time limits and bare knuckles yeah. and all this shit. And then I see that, you know, Kid Shamrocks, he has the place in Lodi. And yeah. then um and then I found out that one of my good friends, uh, Frank Gallo, who's another yeah. interesting guy who's uh, has a very, very interesting person with law enforcement and and all the shit that's happened between him and the different sheriffs in Stockton, and he's done a, mm-hmm. done a lot of crazy shit. Um, but um, you know, he was go- he was working for that boys' home, the Bob Shamrock boys' home, and he was going to the Lions Den, and he was one of the guys that I knew that was a martial artist. And once in a while, whenever I see him, we would like fuck around. He would throw kicks at me and shit, and uh, and, and so I knew he was going there. And I asked him about it, and and, and then like I was like, this is crazy, man. They have a uh, this you know this they have Ken Shamrock and. You know, Oleg Tarov and all these people training right in Lodi. And I guess at first I kind of went, it's just a fan. I'm, I love this. I love watching this. And I could go here and train. And it's like, you know, it would be like if you're a football fan and you're playing catch with Jerry Rice. It's like yeah. I, I'm a huge fight fan and I'm, I'm grappling with Frank Shamrock and, and, and mm-hmm. fighters at the time like Jerry Bolander. And, and then, um, you know, I, I, I really started digging it, started going more and more. And then, uh, uh, I was about, you know, uh, life was just crazy. And I ended up having a daughter who, uh, who had cancer, mm. you know, we had to, and, and, and I never really quite got together to, to have a full on good pro career, but I did, you know, I had some fights and, uh, but I, I've been a lifelong martial artist ever since. Wow. You mentioned you have a daughter. How many kids do you have? I got two. I got a son and a daughter. Okay. And, and, uh, Tell me about the, them. Are they? Do they live with you? Do they live around you? Um, you know, me and their mom. I'm not. It might surprise you a lot to know this, but I'm not an easy person to live with. You know, like, <laughs> so, uh, you know, my, my, I think I, I'm always I'm always chasing something. You know, and um, I think my I think uh, you know, uh, the the God bless her. You know, we're good friends now, but uh, she got tired of the of the chase and, and me not being around and going after this and going after that and this is going to be the thing you know <laughs> finally gonna, this, I'm finally going to get rich you know this is going to be the thing and um, all the other a lot of other shit happened too and so we ended up getting divorced but um so my daughter lives with her mom she's 19 my son lives you know my son goes back and forth he's 11 um hmm. it, it, we you know we managed to put a lot of the past uh, aside and raise our kids and um you know she's a great woman and i have you know, the utmost respect for her Hmm. Ah, I see. So do you now where in this uh, process does pro wrestling come in? You said you're always yeah, a fan. So like, I always wanted to do pro wrestling. Like, okay, so let me say that. Let me back up a little bit. Me and my cousin that I did inside BJJJ with Tim Freeman, who's now a, a black belt in jujitsu and he runs two uh, 10th planet jujitsu academies. Um, a shout out there to those guys. If you're in, if you're in Stockton, they have a great uh, 6 a.m. assassins class of, you, you you know at six o'clock in the morning it's a good time to do it because you get your get your jujitsu in you know before your day begins and if, if you don't do nothing else you got your training in but um so we you know like I said we were strict you know our parents were strict and we we weren't allowed to do a lot you know a lot of things like other kids but uh we were what we did have was wrestling like we mm-hmm. couldn't go to parties we couldn't go to to hang out with kids that didn't go to our church. We had fucking wrestling. And, 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 mm-hmm. and you know, like, my old man was fucked, and my parents got divorced. And and I don't mean that bad. I love my old man to death. He's helped me out in so many ways. There's so many there's so many good things about him. But um, but, uh, and, but but as a kid, things were confusing and hurtful. You know, that, 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 that happened. But we had wrestling filled that fucking void. And every Saturday and Sunday, it was wrestling. And we, we loved wrestling. And, and, I, and, and I never thought that I could do it. But so that's why I really wanted to do wrestling, but there was no wrestling school. So I, I kind of got into fighting instead. And I remember stepping in the cage when I fought and I thought about, you know, the Macho Man and Jake the Snake when I, when I first stepped foot in the I thought mm. about watching Jake the Snake and the Macho Man at the Spanish, at, no, at the Spano Center. Um, mm. and, 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 you know, when I watched them do the cage match, that's the first thing I thought about. So, you know, the internet was not where it is today. And so I'm doing, you know, I'm training, you know, doing MMA and this other jiu-jitsu and training with Nick Diaz and Steve Heath and Tim McKenzie and all the tough guys that were in Stockton back then. And um, and then so I'm married. And, and then one day, I, you know, I'm like, you know, um, I, I, I give up fighting and I do the job and I get a house and 
and we have our son. He's like one or two at the time, and and you know, and then and then my uh, my girl, my wife at the time was like was remembering a lot of shit I did in the past, you know, and 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 just feeling like you know, uh, not I can't let a lot of this shit go, and so she wanted a divorce. Mm-hmm. At this point, I wasn't training anymore. I'm in my forties now. I don't mm-hmm. look that good. And she's losing a fuckload of weight, you know, before I can see this, this is good about to happen. She's losing weight. She's looking better and better. Everyone's telling me, oh, my God, your wife is so beautiful. You're such a lucky man. Do you realize how lucky you are to have her? And I'm like, fuck, man, this ain't good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then we ended up, you know, she's up asking for a divorce. And I'm like, fuck, I'm fucking 40 in my 40s. I'm fat. I'm balding. What the fuck are you gonna do now? You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm, and then, so mm-hmm. I just kind of like I said, you know, I, I went balls to the wall, started working out and training, and and then I was like, man, what did I always want to do? You know, maybe that I didn't do before because I was married. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I was like, you know what? I always wanted to fucking do pro wrestling, and then mm-hmm. uh, Jake ended up uh, working where I was working at. He got hired, Jake uh, Sherman, who's a uh, who runs TWF and he was like, and he was, he was, uh, I was a sales manager. He's one of my, he was, you know, one of the guys I was starting to train. And I was like, you, you know, you have a wrestling school. And I was like, so, um, and then I was, and then I started training. I started training under, uh, Vinny Massaro. You know, I got my, mo- most of my training came under Vinny. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much, you know, some other people, but Vinny taught me how to bump, taught me how to headlock, hammer lock and all, you know, taught me a lot of shit. And, um, but, uh, you know, and then, and then, um, I started, you know, doing TWF and, and I didn't quite understand how wrestling worked, man. I stepped on some toes and made a lot of friends, man. Oh, lost you. Uh, oh, there yeah, you go. I think I'm back. Made a lot of okay. friends, made a lot of enemies along the way, but that that's kind of how, you know, how I started. Wow. So tell me now, uh, training under Vinny Massaro. So, uh, what was that like? You know, it was, it was um, actually, I think the first guy I ever trained under was a dude named Shane Lockhart. And I think he's really, 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 a really underrated, talented uh, wrestler. I um, think he was the TWF champ, and he comes from, he comes from Minnesota. Um, I th- you know, I, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. You know, I had my first couple of classes under him, and then Vinny was fresh off of Lucha Underground. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, Jake went to Vinny. Um, you know, the wrestler trainer relationship is a crazy one bro um mm-hmm. and, and there was times i loved vinny there's times and there's times when i didn't like that i didn't love vinny you know like but at mm-hmm. the end of the day i love vinny at the end of the day i love i love vinny when it's all said and done you peel when you peel all the layers away and the smoke clears i got a lot of love in my heart for vinny massaro um but you know but then there's a lot of things that pissed me off that he did too and he comes from uh you know he comes from a different era a different time and and and, and his his training and, and his trainers, you know, were were, were motherfuckers, kind of, in a lot of ways, truth be told. Mm-hmm. And he would kind of give me that motherfucker a little bit, you know, sometimes. And and it, and so there were times when I would get mad and, and not talk to him for quite some time. And but then I always go back and become friends again. So he was a he, Vinny knows more wrestling than what most people forgot. Um, mm-hmm. um, and I think Mike Modest said it a long time ago, back in the day, if Vinny had the body, he'd have been WWE for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, things have changed now and he's in Japan and he's doing great and I'm happy for him but um, you know Vinny is a great he's a really good teacher man like he knows the, he'll teach you what you need to know and the rest is up to you after that wow so no tell me so you you get into wrestling and you're a little bit older I mean you're training in your yeah. 40s yeah, so yeah, so up. tell me yeah. tell me about that experience because most of these guys coming in their 20s they're in their 20s yeah, I mean, that's the thing. So, you know, you said that I got this, you know, reputation. People talk a lot of shit about me. And I'm like, well, you know what? You take your first bump at 42 and then do as good as me, motherfucker. And, and, and then talk some shit, you know? Yeah. And, it, and it's like, I think, you know, I've never, uh, it's not easy, but I have always had an attitude when I go into, I need it. Sometimes I need to, I just, I don't, I do better when there's a chip on my shoulder. I do better mm-hmm. when I think people doubt me. I do better when people don't like me. Yeah, for some fucked up reason. And um, <laughs> so, you know, and I didn't know how this, there's a real, there's a weird hierarchy of this and you can step on toes when you're new. But I felt like I was, I felt like I'm a, I feel like 
to this day, I'm a bad motherfucker. I ain't afraid of anybody. And, and, mm-hmm. and when I say, like, when I say this, anyone, anytime, any place, any form of combat, it's not just a gimmick. I fucking mean it. And so I kind of have that attitude about life. And then so you have guys that have been in wrestling for a long time and they feel like they have established themselves. Don't always take kindly to a guy like me who um, is like, you know what, I'm going to say what I want and I'm going to do what I want. And if we got a problem, let's just fucking let's just fix it. And, you know, in wrestling, there's a lot of backstabbing, a lot of bitch shit and a lot of, you know, behind the scenes things where where people won't do things to your face. They'll do it behind your, your back and play politics and try to get you on books and try to get you off shows. Mm. that sort of thing so um you know um i ruffled feathers but I, I i get a fuckload of love from a lot of people and i get a fuckload of hate too yeah and, and some of the feather ruffling was me just not understand some of it was yeah i'm like fuck you bitch you know what I'm saying? other <laughs> the other part was me maybe not understanding how it worked and some people taking me more serious than what they should have been taking me hmm so, so tell me, like, give me an example of a. Do you have any situations you want to talk about about where you you maybe like ruffled uh, some feathers? <laughs> um, I almost don't want to, but like, <laughs> because, like poor Mike. So Mike Hayashi is 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 uh, you know, uh, he he runs the Dragons and he coaches the, the two and nine Dragons. And I, I brought Mike Hayashi in to, to coach. Yeah, and 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 I, I've and, you know, and I, and we've been friends for a long time, and. And um, in some ways, I made his life miserable. He, he has to take for me, but um, for what you know. But um, it was really kind of a misunderstanding. Um, I was uh, managing Phil Baroni, who's uh, fucking in prison right now for murder, and Stephen mm. Bonner, who's who's dead right mm. right now. And um, I was newer into wrestling, and I was I was managing their their fight careers. Mm. and they were getting into pro wrestling, so I was managing that, too. Mm. Um, and I was doing a little pro wrestling, and I thought it would, any, any at the time, anybody would, would anybody would, there were two, there were two guys that they were, they, they were going to wrestle, that we wanted to have a match with, uh, you know, with and those two guys, and, and, but I didn't understand how, uh, how it worked, like, uh, Oh, look, it was we were at Hood Slam and 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 I didn't realize that there was a difference between the the, the brothers that were running in Hood Slam. So we had went to a Hood Slam show, and um, we went to a Hood Slam show, and 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 and, and it was a work. You know, we were talking shit about the brothers, Bonner and Hold on, Maroney, wait, wait, and I guess Matt, you know, Matt, 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 I'm having a hard time hearing you. Yeah. Did your did your car pick you up? Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. switch to Bluetooth. Are we good? Yeah, is it good now? Yeah, that's better. So you were saying the brothers? Are you talking now? about the Stoner? It sounds yeah. good now. So the Stoner brothers. So yeah, we were trying to do a tag team match with the Stoner brothers and, and Stephen Bonner and Phil Baroni. They wanted to do it at, at, at Stoner University, I think. I didn't know the difference back then. I thought it was all the same. Mm-hmm. And anyways, Dark Sheik didn't really like the idea that much, you know. And I didn't really know that. We, the, we they went to a show, got hammered. It feels nuts, you know. Looking back at it, he's crazy. Maybe offended mm-hmm. some people. And then me and Stefan hung out at the unit, at, at, you know, at the warehouse after that for a minute, and everything seemed cool. And then Phil was on Twitter talking shit, but he was just working. Mm-hmm. It wasn't serious. He didn't mean anything at the time. It mean anything serious. And then it went from a work to a shoot. You know what I'm saying? He tagged, yeah, worked tagged, himself uh, into a shoot. Yeah. Everyone got worked up, you know, and 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 and, and then so it, and then some some people came at me, and I came right back at them. Um. But like you know, I wasn't really. I don't. I don't know. I just think it's just kind of. The, it's really the past, and I don't really give too many fucks about any of it. You know, at this point, um, mm-hmm. the brothers are really good. You know what they do? They're very entertaining. They're very, 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 very fucking entertaining wrestlers. Um, you know, and at this point, if I if I have, you know, maybe I could have handled that a little better if I had understood, you know, a little more how wrestling worked. And and, and sometimes I'm emotional. And I say things that I wish I wouldn't have said. And and, mm. and maybe that's one of those moments where I could have just walked away instead of escalating it. Yeah. Well, you keep saying you're like, well, you know, I didn't understand how wrestling works. And what do you mean by that? There's like, when you're new, they don't want to hear your ideas. Mm. When you just do, when you just got into it, they don't want to hear about what you want to do or what you think is cool or what you know about wrestling. Mm. Um, however, 
by the time I got into it, like I had done pro fighting and I had done a podcast that got over a million downloads. I'd done ring announcing. I had signed contracts. Like I'd done a lot in my life at that point. So I didn't feel like I was just some idiot. And I'd been a wrestling fan my entire life. Um, so I didn't feel like I, and I, I felt like, you know, and I didn't even, you know, I think, you know, uh, I, I think I got a good brain for entertaining people. And, and, and so, but anyways, you know, th- there's a way to get something booked and, and you could easily offend people and step on toes and not realize mm-hmm. it when you're new. Yeah. So when you start, uh, with the wrestling career, um, Tell me how it's, you know, you, you, well, let's, let's put it this way. I know that you, um, you and CJ, Michael, Sean, the godfather of Swole have kind of put together this faction, the 209 crew, sure. which, seems, which is seemed to get a lot of, uh, seem to get a lot of play. You guys seem to be getting a lot sure. of bookings that way. So uh, yeah. tell me how, tell me how, tell me how that all came about and how you kind of morphed into the gimmick that you have now. I mean, <laughs> A lot of the gimmick is just me, to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, amped up a bit, you know, but it's mm-hmm. it's 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 you know, it's me um, for the most part. You know, the big MF. The, I, I got the big MF name on the inside PJJ podcast. Actually, um, I pissed some people off, and there some people were were um were uh, doing uh online trying to get uh, uh people to to get on board with getting me off the show. Hmm. And then somebody said, "No, nah, man, that guy's cool. I love Big MF." And then it just stuck after that. But nice. um, yeah, Big MF started on on you know, podcasts and shit like that, and then it's morphed, it morphed into uh, whatever. It, it was a joke at first, you know. And but um, but you know, I have this. It's, it's like you know, it's it's like a me amped up. Um, CJ, I met, I met CJ at a wrestling show when I was with Phil before CJ didn't even wrestled. Um, he was he came to a show. He was in the audience, and he had a Bullet Club T-shirt on. Mm. And I was on the mic when I looked at him. I told him the Bullet Club sucks. I told him <laughs> to take the fucking shirt off. And um, I didn't even know who he was at the time. I forgot that he. I even forgot about it. But I didn't remember him. I remember like we we um he was he man. He's really is a really entertaining guy. We've had a lot of fun. We've we've done a lot of shit together. <laughs> like you know, some people are dorks. Oh, how do I how do I I don't know if I want to say the word. Some people don't have a lot of fun that do this, you know, like they mm-hmm. go home or they're straight edge or uh, when me and CJ were really running, running hard as a team, we were opposite of straight edge. Just let me just say that. <laughs> like, like, um, <laughs> we've done a lot. We've had a lot of fun and, and we've had a lot of moments, you know, and, we'd, and if we were around in the eighties, you know what I'm saying? We would have fit in really good. <laughs> it, it, you know, the, 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 we, we lived the life, you know, we had a lot of fucking fun. Mm-hmm. Where are you normally? Like, what are your big promotions that you work for? Oh, you know, GWF, and I think it's, that's gotten bigger and bigger. They've been around for 20 years, and a lot of people in the business used to shit on them, but like, because wrestling is weird. But we're, we're selling out all the time. We're drawing, we're out drawing a lot of people. I'm getting paid really well. Um, GWF, Lucha Patron, uh, shout out to Corey Machado. You know, they're putting on big events. They're, it, it, we're, we're selling, you know, you know, 800 tickets, you know, uh, you know, 500, 400 tickets, 500 tickets, 1,000 tickets, um, filling up, you know, the um, the, the uh, nice arenas, um, working with guys like Sean Hernandez, um, uh, shout out to Sean Hernandez, uh, uh, the super mechs from uh, TNA, uh, he's been all over the place, all over the world. One of the, one of the, one of the guys that like, that, you know, uh, people love me or hate me, and a lot of people don't like me, some people don't, and they were trying to say I shouldn't be booked, and one of the guys that said, man, you're fucking doing the, one of the guys that was like, you know, you're doing the right thing was, it made me realize I was doing the right thing was Sean Hernandez. You know, he, he, mm-hmm. he helped me out a lot, put us over. He requested, you know, he literally wanted to work with me and CJ and, 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 and Michael Sean and do a, a gimmick with us, you know, and I really appreciate that. Um, but, uh, and Michael Sean, I've known for a long time and, you know, we, just, we, we, we became really good friends over time and, and had each other's back, you know, and when shit, when people, if people had a problem with me, they had a problem with him and, and, and vice versa. So, um, mm. you know, it's, it's, a, you know, it's, it's like one of those things where we're, you know, if he called me up in the middle of the night and he's like, Hey man, I got to hide a body. I'm jumping in the car and, and, and we're doing it. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, you know, and then I think that, you know, we, we did a lot of shit with next level and Justin Caton and, um, we were all, you know, all friends and, um, 
uh, CWA with uh, with uh, Hast- Jason Hastings, and we've been uh, you know doing um, um, uh, Realm of Warriors. They're really I really like Realm of Warriors. They, they they've treated me really well. Um, you know, um, a lot of little lucha shows too. Like you know, um, so it's, it's been good. You know, I've been busy. I've been uh, there was there was a particular guy that said uh, that that literally went try to get me unbooked all over the place but mm. like it, it really got me booked more mm. who who tried to get you unbooked and why um man that's a long story brother <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah fuck um uh, you know wrestling is you know uh, wrestling is strange man and and so, like i said some people said to being a man about it they'll go behind your back and 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 but like mm-hmm. I've done a lot, I've done a lot of good things. People don't realize. Like I, I, I've, I've put, I put a lot of money into different indie wrestling companies that no one knows I did. I got, mm-hmm. I got, I got us booked into venues. I got guys paid. I got sponsors. Mm-hmm. Like I, I've done a lot of shit. I, I, I put together westling camps. I put together. Tra- I got guys training. I got guys booked. Like I've done more than what people realize. Hmm. Hmm. Well, so so tell me, what is it that that fuels you to invest? I mean, look, it's. I've been in the wrestling in and around the wrestling business since 1998. Okay. And so wow. Holy looking shit. around, yeah, really? I mean, like, well, yeah, my story is a little different. I, I trained with you, you know, Oliver John, I trained with him. I, in I know Oliver John actually through team Shamrock 2000 before he was uh, doing pro wrestling. Yeah. He so, was doing so MMA. Well, well, the interesting thing about that was was he was doing pro wrestling in the 97 to 98 time. He was training yeah. people with Paul DeMarco. I was there with Justin, with El- with Alexis Derevko, all wow. those guys. And then uh, and then it closed down. That's when he went off to try to do MMA before he, he got his retina detached. That's when I knew him uh, was through uh, Team Shamrock 2000, through Steve Heath, Bob Shamrock, and through Nick Diaz actually got, one, got his start as well. Right. So he was... So, but uh, I trained with them, and then when that all went down, you know, I didn't, I didn't finish my training. So I started training in my backyard, and then became a backyard wrestler. It's funny you bring up TWF. I had SWF. He had, they had TWF, and we were kind of, I kind of like looked at because TWF had public access back then. Yeah, I, I remember that. I was a diehard wrestling fan when I was a kid. I watched the public access, and we were yeah. younger, actually, a kid. But I would think, I would think, where are these guys at? Like, what the fuck are yeah. these guys? Dude, right. Well, we. Shit. Well, we were, we were in, so I was in Sacramento and I was doing all the, I was getting all the TV stations. I was getting all the newspapers, all the stuff, but TWF had the public access. So I was kind of jealous because they had the public access and I couldn't get to it. Right. <laughs> and so, so, uh, but anyway, then uh, Rich Roby called me and I was integral at the beginning of SPW when that started okay. in 2000. And then I went on a mission for my church, uh, came back. And then when I came back, uh, kind of just went through school and then opened a wrestling promotion in 2008. No shit. And we, yeah, and we did SWF. We did stuff with TNA. We did stuff with New wow. Japan. We did stuff with Lucha Libre USA. So I ran all sorts of shows up until about 2012. And then I, be, you know, I finished law school, became an attorney, and then you know, <laughs> you got a real and job. Then, right. And then I trained. And then I trained with uh, Johnny Jeter. I finished my training with Johnny Jeter back in 2020. One ish, okay. twenty one and twenty two, mm-hmm. and then uh, twenty two, and then now, um, and now I'm working. You know, now I'm working and just having fun so my kids can see it. But I've been around that long, and and it's sometimes you can't even get somebody to invest in gear. So it's like, <laughs> how, so it's like, how? Wh- what is it that propels you to invest in all these promotions and all these different people? I don't know, man. Honestly, to be completely honest with you. I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like I know I know I love it. I know I've always loved like giving something like I, I, I know I've loved giving something of myself, like taking a piece of me and giving it to an audience, taking a piece of me and giving it to students, taking a piece of me and giving it to some people at work, like being a salesman, teaching people how to sell, like give, giving people entertainment. Helping people mm-hmm. to learn how to entertain people. It's like giving, mm-hmm. I guess. And mm-hmm. and there's something about like I think entertainment is a gift, you know, as I think it really is a gift. I think life is harsh. 
and um, entertainment is just as important as anything else. Is it just as important as this might sound crazy, but to me, it's just as important as a doctor who's like doing brain surgery because life is fucked and you're gonna suffer losses and eventually you're gonna die and you're gonna lose people. And 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 you can be positive and you can have a good life, but bad things are gonna happen. You things are gonna hurt you. And but but entertainment distracts us we get a moment where we forget that maybe we have a son that's on drugs or our wife is cheating on us or we're about to lose her job or i don't have a job or i was an alcoholic and i fucked over my family whatever it is that fucks you up when you're being entertained and you could forget all that shit and you could get drawn in and feel good and get drawn into a story and get drawn into a match and, and be entertained and forget about all the fucked up shit you know i think mm. that's a gift and um yeah. And to be able to do that is a gift too, because you're also getting a moment to forget about everything, and 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 you become one with you know with with the audience, and the audience becomes one with you, and and when they're reacting the way you want them to, and, and it, it, it's a beautiful thing. You know, I have to ask you. You brought up something. Do you feel? So I know a lot of people who, whether it's community theater or pro wrestling or you know MMA. They like that because it gives them a moment to kind of be somebody else and not worry about their stuff. Do you get that? Like, is there stuff like that? Like, you know, you mentioned some of the stuff like with, you know, you have a, a learning disorder, you know, learning disability. You talked about your, you know, your divorce and kind of fight sports and wrestling being there to kind of pull you out of that. Do you get some of that? Is that something that you oh. like to do? Yeah, man, I'm a fucking mess, man, to be honest with you. Like we all are, man. You know, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, you know, I I I really this has been a really you know, wrestling is it's been tough, man, you know, losing my mother and the, the, the things that I the family problems I inherited because of that and I mean man, you know, um it's 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 it, but I was almost ready to leave wrestling, to be honest with you. Like I I mm -hmm. I, I, I started developing some personal problems. I started falling into some addictions and they started getting the better of me and I got pretty bad. I got pretty fucking bad. I went to a dark hole and then, um, I lose my mom and, um, and, um, I, uh, you know, um, I went even darker for a minute and, and, and I, and I, and I took everything I had to crawl out of that hole. I mean, it literally took everything I had to crawl out of that fucking hole I was in. And, um, and, and, and there's so many backstabbers in wrestling, but then, when I was really, 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 really fucking down, there were some people that were really, really, really fucking there. Mm, like and, um, Michael Sean, Mike Hayashi, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Flacco, uh, you know, Flacco um, was there. And a lot, of, I mean, if, you know, if I'm forgetting somebody, CJ, you know, they came to my mom's funeral and uh, CJ and his mother and, and Mike Hayashi and, and um and and Giga, you know, they they, they showed up and and, and they and, and they helped me out with my brother and dropped some cash and and you know and that really it made me not want to quit wrestling and um and, and so like life is really stressful right now, man. <laughs> really, every day is every day is a challenge. And, but when I'm wrestling, you know, and, you know, uh, it all goes away. Yeah. Well, you know, I can tell you, you know. And you know this. I mean, you, you and I are the same. Uh, look, I don't know exactly how old you are, but we're pretty close. I would imagine. I'm 49. Okay. Well, I'm 40. I'm almost 43. So we're not that far uh -huh. off from each other. And the thing is, is what I've known in my life in those times that are dark, those times that are rough, they could be weeks, months, even years. But it's peaks and valleys, man. The the sun will yeah. shine again. And uh, so. Yeah, I mean, have you noticed that in your life? I mean, it sounds like you've oh. had some tragedy, but you've also had some great stuff. Yeah, man, these the tragedies, you know, they make you they make you stronger. Even even losing my mom in some ways, it's a wound that never heals, but you gain some strength and you grow up in a way that you never realized you'd ever grow up, you know. And um, yeah. um, I definitely, yeah, peaks and I like, man, I'm a I'm a toxic kid that nobody ever fucking believed in, you know? So like just me being where I'm at, you know, is a testament to something. But, um, and, and when I don't you say, know. When like, you say that, well, being what, why, what, let me stop you right there. When you say being where you're at, what are, what do you mean? Like what success is I mean, you seen in your life? Like, you know, I went from being a nobody to learning how to make, making some decent money, not rich, mm -hmm. but doing better than anyone ever thought I would do. You get in a nice place, getting a wrestling school, you know, um, you know, helping people out, um, 
doing a podcast that got over a million downloads, you know, getting in a ring and fighting, doing pro wrestling, you know, being a sales manager, helping people learn how to sell, learning how to sell, like, uh, um, you know, um, uh, that's, you know, uh, some cool shit, you know, that nobody would have thought I would have done. What, what do you sell? Um, I almost don't want to say, man, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to link. I, I you okay. know, um, I, I do some crazy character shit and the further I keep my job from, um, uh, okay, from, that's fine. From, we'll keep that. We'll keep that. You know, under wraps. That's like, not a problem. Some people so, know, but like, I really want to keep that distance and that, and that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. So but it doesn't matter what I sell. If you can sell one thing, you can sell anything. No, you that's true. That is true. It doesn't matter what you're selling. Yeah. Yeah. So now with all this, uh, you know, you, you're, you're wrestling, you've, you've made a life for yourself. I know it's been a little, some, some tough times, but you're going through them. So now what's next? You know, um, I don't know. Number one, I don't know actually, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm still going. I'm, I'm, I'm boxing, you know, I, I, I got a three round boxing thing coming up, uh, in February 25th in series, um, mm. for a little smoke sesh, you know, if you're following me on uh, Instagram, there's more information on that. You know, I'm doing more pro wrestling. We got the 209 Dragons Den that's starting to blow up. Um, I, I'm hoping to win this, you know, see where it goes and maybe looking to do some bare knuckle fights, more mm. pro wrestling. Um, you know, um, we'll see what happens. Mm, man. So, you know, with the last uh, little while we have, I wanted to ask you, uh, I ask everybody three questions. What would you say of all the things that you've done is would you consider your biggest success in life? Huh. Um, success. That's a good what you know, I never consider I really don't consider myself success yet, but um I guess you know, uh being a father, I guess, you know, you know, would mm. be the number one. Mm. Like not not totally fucking that up, you know, like right. um being a father but besides children um well tell me more about that like what do you tell me what your children mean to you i mean you know the, the you know the reason why i keep going the reason why i pulled myself out of the pit that i was in the reason why i i'm still you know doing everything i can to to, to move on and, and and to get up and to, and to be strong mm -hmm. um you know they mean everything you know I mean more than Did anything else do your son, does your son ever come and watch you wrestle or your daughter? Yeah, yeah. My, my daughter doesn't, he's not into it as much. She came before. My son comes mm -hmm. a lot. He, he even sells t-shirts for me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, um, you know, uh, they, they mean a lot. They, they mean more than, you know, they, nothing means more than them. Yeah, absolutely. So what would you say is your biggest failure in life and what did you learn from it? Man, the biggest. Um, I mean, I failed. I failed miserably at marriage. You know, I think maybe that would be. Um, what I learned from that. Um, fuck, bro. I don't know if I. I don't know what I learned, bro, from that one. Um, you know, I learned. Uh, let's see. Wait, give me one second. Um, running out of light here. Anyways, um, I learned uh, that. Uh, you never know. I, what I learned from that is you never know which direction life might take you in. You know, mm. um, you never know. One minute you'll, your life is normal, and the next minute it isn't. And you, we go, we don't. Sometimes you don't recognize that you're living in a moment that's not going to last. And so enjoy mm. that. Enjoy that moment for everything you can get out of it, because you never know when everything is going to change. Yeah, that's true. It's funny. It's it's a crazy moment when your life is one way, and then all of a sudden your life is completely different, and you got to yeah. adjust. That's tough. Yeah. So yeah. now with with all that, you know, you've gone through this. Well, do you ever see yourself getting married again? Oh man, dude, I don't know. Um, that's <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, hold yeah. on, me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Let's say I don't know. Like maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, you know. Yeah. I have, you know, so, um, I, I wouldn't want to say who, but I do have someone in my life, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, who's amazing. Um, I'm very, 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 very much amazing, and, and uh, I know I'm very. She's listening. I'm a very, 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 extremely, you know, hard person to to live with. But um, 
you know, like life has been rough. We both we both been through a lot of crazy shit lately with 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 our families and 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 and, and my mother and 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 my and and all the responsibility that I've inherited mm-hmm. with that. You know, um, she like a she's like a wife to me, but you know, actually putting it. I don't know if I believe in the. Uh, I don't know if I believe in the structure of it the way that it is, but I, she's definitely my life partner. You know, she mm-hmm. stuck around, seen me at my worst, knows me at my worst. You know, and, and still still here so you know um you know something you asked me you mentioned earlier you talked about well you don't you you stopped going to formal church but you still believe in god do you still have a kind of a christian uh judeo-christian yeah i mean yeah yeah for sure i don't i just think it's it's it's, it's, uh, yeah i believe i I believe in yeah god for me i believe in jesus but i i I don't know if everybody has to i don't know i'm not going to say that you know maybe there are other ways i don't know but I believe in, um, I believe in the 10 commandments, you know, I believe in forgiveness. I believe, I believe that, uh, we're all saved by grace, you know, and and I I believe God created the world. And, 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 and at the end of the day, the the only person that I have to fear is God. uh, Like I'll fear no man, you know, and the only person I, 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 I will person or thing or whatever the fuck you want to call him or it or whatever. That's, that's what I bow my knee to. Wow. Okay. So last question I ask everybody, and that is, um, you know, one day you're going to pass away. And when you do, that's there'll be sure. a funeral and uh, <laughs> someone someone will give you a eulogy. What do you hope Holy. is the one thing that someone says in your eulogy? Live every, live, you know, I, I, you know, um, I, I, I did it my way. I lived life the way I wanted to. Um, I got knocked down, but I got back up, you know, uh, I, I, I never stayed down. If, as long as there's breath in me, I'm going to fight, you know, I'm going to get back up and fight until I can't fight anymore. Um, just a fucking tough kid from Stockton who wouldn't give up. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, man, it, it's been interesting. What I, what I love about having a podcast like this is I get an opportunity to learn yeah. from everybody. There's so many different personalities in pro wrestling, and it's cool to hear your story and see where you came from and kind of understand Wrestling means something different to everybody. And it's so interesting yeah. to hear your story and see what it meant to you. And uh, so tell me, where can people find you? Um, first of all, I want to plug the 209 Click Cast. You know, I'm doing now with, uh, with Michael Sean uh, at the uh, Smokers Lounge studio. Um, we, we just had on um, we, 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 we just had on the, the Body Donnas. Um, uh, but before that, we had uh, Tommy Wildfire Rich. We had Missy Hyatt on the show. Um, you know, check that out. Uh, also, I wanted to plug Inside BJJ. You know, if you want to, those two podcasts I'm doing again. Um, uh, Big MF 209 on Instagram. Find me on Facebook. Inside BJJ Matt on Twitter. But pretty much Instagram and Facebook is, is how to find out what, what I'm doing or what I'm doing next. Uh, 209 Dragons Inn in Lodi, California. Every, two, every Wednesday and Thursday, Coach Mike Hayashi is teaching class. We also got Michael Sean. We bring in guest coaches sometimes. Like we brought in last month, uh, Bobby... Um, Bobby Hart, um, you know, so, uh, and, and if you, you know, I teach some kids self-defense, you know, I'm very good at, uh, I am very, I could teach your kid how to defend himself and not get expelled or catch a case, you know, mm-hmm. um, I, I think I offer, I think I could really offer anyone who wants to teach their, their kids how to defend and not, you know, and not really hurt, but also not get hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I do, I do some self-defense classes for people. Um, uh, you know, um, I, I can teach, you know, jujitsu, boxing, um, you know, I do, I do shit like that as well, but, um, but, uh, you know, two or nine click cast, I, I, I really believe in that. I, I believe I'm a good, inter- you know, uh, I believe in that and uh, maybe I'll have you on sometime. We'll, I'll ask you some of these same questions. But, yeah, man, um, do it. But, uh, I'm, I'm always down. The, la- the last show we had on just drew a blank. You know, I've been hitting the head a lot of times, but Tom Pritchard, <laughs> you know, he's down oh. on Dr. Tom Pritchard. So, um, oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, on on uh, you know, you, you could check us out. You could uh, find find me on Spotify for the that those two podcasts. You know, nice. inside BJJ, we've had from we've had Mike Tyson, um, we've had Freddie Freddie Prince Jr., Sean Patrick Flannery, Hicks and Gracie. Um, you know, we, we we've gotten over a million downloads. You know, we we really we, you know we, we've done a lot. You know, as I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, no, you should be. So we'll ride on, man. Well, it's been a pleasure. For those of you who've been listening, subscribe, follow Big MF, Matt Freeman. His podcast is wrestling. And, uh, Matt, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, man, thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It was nice. It was fun talking to you.
Yeah, for sure.